Hello. In this Java tutorial, we are going to learn how to traverse a two-dimensional array. Before watching this video, you're going to want to have a general understanding of how arrays work in Java. For more information on that topic, please click on the link in the upper right-hand corner of this screen. Some important facts to know. Arrays in Java and most languages start at index 0. So an array of size 5 will have indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Dot length will return the number of indexes in an array. And you can traverse an array with a for loop or a for each loop. We'll learn how to do both. Let's start by creating an array. So we're going to declare a two-dimensional array of type int. The name of the variable is ARR and we've got our array hard-coded. So a two-dimensional array in Java is really one-dimensional arrays inside another one-dimensional array. So you see we have two one-dimensional arrays inside another one-dimensional array. Well, we generally draw it out like this when we're tracing. Really, it's more like this up here, with the rows being the outer array and the columns being each of the inner arrays. Now let's look at some code for traversing an array. So you see our outer for loop covers the rows, and the inner for loop covers the columns. In Java, we say 2D arrays are row major. That means the first number will tell the row we want, or instead of the row, you can think of it as the outer array. And the second number will tell us the column we want, or if you're visualizing like this, what index on the inner array. We'll start by declaring int r equals 0, placing that on the stack. We'll continue as long as r is less than arr.length. So if we take a 2D array like arr and say dot .length, since 2D arrays in Java are row major, this is going to tell us the number of rows, or in this visualization, the number of indexes in the outer array. Right now, r is less than the number of rows. r is 0, and there's two rows. So we're going to continue. Now we declare c, and we set it equal to 0. r and c are often variables we use for row and column. Next, we're going to check, is c less than arr index 0.length? So let's talk about exactly what this means. So we're taking out the 1D internal array in index 0 of the outer array. We can also think of that as looking at row 0 in this visualization and counting how many columns in row 0. So there are three columns in row 0, so ARR index 0 dot length is 3. So we're checking is C, which is 0, less than 3, which it is, so we continue. Now we're going to print out ARR row 0, column 0. So row 0, column 0 is 2. And that goes to our output. Next, we get to the end of the for loop. So we increment c by 1. We go back up to the top of the loop. We see if c, which is right now 1, is less than the length of this inner array. And it is, so we continue. So now we print off row 0, column 1, which is 3. So we have it there in the output get to the end of the internal loop again, so we increment c to 2, then we check again, is c, which is 2, less than the length of the inner array, 3, it is, so we print off row 0, column 2, which is row 0, column 0, 1, 2, which is 1, so that goes there. Next, we increment c by 1 to 3, we check, is 3, less than 3. It is not. So we terminate this inner loop. We continue on to this line of code. So we system out print line, which brings us down to the next line here on the console. So we get to the end of the outer loop, which means we increment r by 1. So now r equals 1. Now we check is r, which is 1 less than arr.length. So if we just do a 2d array.length, it means we're counting the number of rows. So we can count it like this, 1, 2, 
or we can count it as the outer array in this visualization, which is also 1, 2. So 1 is less than 2, so we continue. We set C back to 0. We check, is 0 less than the length of this inner array? So 0 is less than 3. So we continue. We system out print row 1, column 0. So row 1, column 0 will be this 8 right here, and we output it there. Get to the end of the inner loop. So we increment C to 1. We check, is 1 less than 3? It is, so we continue. Now we output row 1, column 1. So row 1, column 1 is 5. Then we get to the end of the inner loop, increment C to 2. We check, is 2 less than 3? It is, so we continue. Then we system out print, row 1, column 2. So row 1, column 2 is right here. 6, we output that 6. Get to the end of the inner loop, increment C to 3. We check, is 3 less than 3? It is not. So we terminate this inner loop. We system out print line again, so we go down to the next line on the output. Get to the end of the outer loop, so we increment R to 2. We check, is 2 less than error.length, so the number of rows is 2, so 2 is not less than 2, so we terminate this outer loop, and then we're done with our code. A couple important things to know about tracing with for loops. First of all, you notice we do system out print here and system out print line. Print will just print on the same line, whereas print line will print on the line and then go to the next line afterwards. Also, using for loops, instead of just printing out what was in there, we could change the value in there. So we could say ARR RC equals some new value. So we could change the data inside this array using for loops. Another cool thing is instead of incrementing by 1, we could increment by 2, 3, 4, whatever. We wouldn't have to go through each one, one by one, if we wanted to skip some of them. Now let's look about doing this with a for each loop. So we're going to declare a new array. This one's a little smaller. It's a 2 by 2. So we see we have it here on our heap. Now let's look at the for each loops. So for each loops have two parts. The first part is we have some sort of temporary variable that holds whatever we're pulling out. And then we have a colon, and then whatever we're array or in array list that we're pulling it out of. So we're taking it out of ARR, and we're taking out each row one at a time, and we're putting it into a one-dimensional array. So we can see we take out our one-dimensional arrays and put them into row. And then this inner for each loop will take out each of these individual ints from the one-dimensional array we pulled out and stored in row. So let's trace this out. So we start by creating row, and that's pointing at one of these internal arrays, or we could think of it as pointing at one of the rows in the 2D array. Now we go to the internal for each loop. So we're pulling out a value out of this one-dimensional array. So the first one we pull out is 4, and it goes into the variable value. So value equals 4. Now we're going to system out print line value plus a space, so it goes to the console. Then we go back up to the top, we pull out the next value, which is 2, so that 2 goes into the value variable. Then we system out print line value and a space right down there. Now we've finished with all the values inside this 1D array. So this for each loop is going to terminate automatically. So now we go out here to system out print line, go down to the next row here. So we go back up to the top of the external for each loop and we pull out the next row, which is this row, or we can think about it as the internal 1D array. So row is pointing at this one. Then we pull out the first value out of the 1D array. So we pull out the 6, so value equals 6. Then we print out value down there. Then we go back to the top of the for each loop and pull out the next value inside the 1D array, which is 3. Then we print off 3, which goes down there. Then we're again done with this internal for each loop. So we print a new line, go down to the next line. Then we are done with the external for each loop because we've gotten both rows. Now let's talk about some limitations of for each loops. First of all, we could change the value of this value variable. And we wouldn't have to call it value. We could call it temp or whatever we wanted to call it. It's got to be some variable. 
um, we could change this value. However, that wouldn't affect the array. So if you want to change the data in the array, you should be using for loops, not for each loops. Also, a for each loop will go through each of the indexes in the arrays. It won't let you skip in any way. So while it's a little easier to write, it's a little more limited with what you can do with it. If you'd like to learn more about arrays in Java, you can type Array Java Tutorial Oracle into Google and choose the first result, or you can type this web address into your address bar. To see the next video in this curriculum, please click on the link in the lower left-hand part of the screen. To see the entire curriculum, please click on the link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen.